I don't have a script today. I'm just gonna wing it for you. This is gonna be a walkthrough of my enshrouded build that somehow got nominated for the top 25 in the enshrouded Architects of Wonder competition. I have absolutely no idea how or why this build that me and my friend worked on got nominated for the top 25, but I haven't had any idea how to function since I found out. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this build in a little bit more detail than my video that I posted for my submission. And rather than doing free cam stuff, I'm gonna do an actual walkthrough and just talk about it as we go to each building and kind of the thought process and the process of creating each of these spaces for our hanging city. All right, gamers. So first things first, we are going to fast travel over to the Low Meadows Fast Travel Spire. That's where our build is located. It's just south. I'm sure that you saw the uh, the flame altar there on the map. But I think this is a more fun way to approach it rather than fast traveling directly into the center of the town. Basically just going to be able to jump right off. You can see the beginning of it here. You can see some stuff sticking out of that hill. And if you're familiar with this part of the map, there's usually um, no vegetation at all. It's very bare and we didn't really like that once we started building it felt kind of empty so now we wanted this to be a bit more lush and overgrown and it also kind of helps hide this city as you approach and as we get closer you can kind of see what's happening and before we actually go up to this bottom platform we're just going to walk around down here a little bit more you can see it's very densely populated with trees and bushes and we have these um these sort of fountains of water coming down from above and where they're landing, we have just, you know, the uh, super bright green and lush foliage. And you, you can tell it's sort of this magical, having this magical effect on the terrain around where these pools are forming, uh, sprouting extra dense and, uh, you know, a larger variety of different plants and fruits and flowers and such. Uh, so this water clearly possesses some sort of otherworldly or magic power about it. Uh, but we really like this sort of path through the trees, especially from this south side, because it's a little bit unassuming. You obviously have these torches, but it does a really good job of sort of obstructing your view and almost hiding this city that's hanging above you as you're passing through this area. Obviously here now you see this platform, um, but you still don't really get too much of an idea of what's happening. Again, you have these couple fountains coming down and then uh, a little branch off here and we can grapple up to our main mid platform which is where our flame altar is actually located and this is sort of a central park type area uh, you can see one of the fountains we saw below is actually coming out of the bottom of this pool it's leaking down through the platform um, but you can see it's actually cascading down from a platform above that and from the mountain above that so this mountain that this town has been built underneath is actually full of this water of life, sort of this magical spring of life, if you will. Um, and we really, we kind of came up with that mid-build project. We liked the idea. Uh, we included the luminous block in a few different places as accents, and we started playing around with what if this was part of the lore? What if this really was part of what was shaping the city and its um, theoretical inhabitants? So we have this sort of park, middle, communal area that gives you access to all of these other platforms around the middle here from it so a nice little you know simple area a little bench to sit in and enjoy your your time right here by the spring um, and everything is held up you can see by these giant bronze chains all of these platforms are freestanding there's nothing touching or obstructing the nature below um, so i think the first place we'll go uh, is going to be right here this is sort of a uh, an interesting spot you can see the water is actually uh, broken through here when this chain was built into the mountain they they broke into one of the springs and it is running down the chain and falling down and it was creating that second pool we had down beneath and this whole town is navigable via grapples everything has to do with hanging it's sort of a maybe advanced civilization more refined at the very least. They like to live sort of among the trees almost. I really like these entrance ways. We came up with this with the tarred roof shingles, uh, doing the diagonal pieces obviously to get these ornamental end pieces. And these lanterns fit really nicely in the gap naturally created by those two pieces. Um, 
So I just thought that looked really nice and we ended up putting that on the front of all of the main houses here. And I think that was just a cool little accent that we were able to figure out. But inside the houses, they're obviously very small. Uh, we didn't want the structures to be too intrusive to the environment around. It was more about the entire experience and the entire environment rather than the buildings themselves. So you can see they're rather small, but we still, you know, we have a bed, we have a fireplace. So this is giving you warmth and you do have a rested bonus in all of these buildings. So they are still relatively functional. But we also wanted them to feel like they were being lived in. So you have, you know, a book and this is where someone might wake up and eat their breakfast and drink their coffee and read a book or you know have, have a meal enjoy some time they all these people are highly educated as they built a hanging city so books is a theme through all of these buildings everyone has a ton of books they're very learned people and yeah we just really wanted to to sort of maximize the amount of space we had because it wasn't going to be a ton of space in the first place so we really did want to uh to kind of take advantage of what we had and really make it feel lived in and as if someone has tried to basically turn a uh, New York City apartment into a livable space, because these are very, very small, as you can tell. Um, but yeah, we have these anchors attached to each of the platforms with the chains going up to anchors in the mountain. Everything is, um, is very, very thought out. And uh, obviously the windows have these little shingle covers at the top. Uh, just to add a little bit more depth this is this is something that i've i've never really been super good at honestly is the creating depth in my builds and stuff like that so you can see all the, the platforms rather than just being one solid bottom piece they're three layers deep just to add a bit more depth again just so it doesn't feel like this big flat plank of wood it feels a bit more structurally sound and rigid and like it makes a little bit more sense so we'll go up here to our next house we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming with this message sorry again here i am editor little injection I think it would be completely negligent for me to fail to mention that I stream on Twitch and you should go check it out and the entire build process of this and all of our other build projects are being streamed there while we're working on them. So if you want to see these things in progress and hear us talk about and deliberate the decisions that we're making for these projects, go follow it, check it out. Okay, back to the video. Zip up here. This is actually the first one that I built after building this main bottom platform. So this one's a bit interesting. This one holds a special place in my heart. Again, it has that cool entrance. Uh, but this one was interesting to me. I really liked this one. We've got, like I said, books is a big theme. Another sort of open book someone was reading right here. Um, we've got little bookshelves. We've got these banners as curtains for all of the windows. Again, another uh, fireplace, so you're getting that rested bonus. I liked this little sort of elevated platform for a desk where, again, they're doing their reading and their research and learning. And, you know, obviously you got to have a drink with you while, uh, while you're doing that. I don't have a drink with me right now, and I wish I did. I thought that the almanac looked really good. Just, you know, trying to find different stuff. And then we actually have a bed up on a loft up here, which I really uh i really like that touch it's, it's a little bit interesting but this is a fun little house um and we just like i said we really wanted it to feel like someone had come in here and tried to maximize the little space that they had available to them but it was a choice it's not that they were restricted it's that they wanted to honor and respect the land that they had been given they have been blessed with this spring of life and it's sort of like a um a religion almost like a deity to them so We'll go over here and we'll swing over to our main dining area. Sort of a communal hall almost, sort of like a buffet style situation here. You can see we've got various bowls and mugs and pitchers for you to grab and bring to your table. And we've got an, another fireplace in the oven. And the, I thought the cauldron was a nice little addition there, you know, whatever. But you can see here we've got more springs of that water of life coming out of the mountain and creating these little pools in the corner that obviously create for some very nice accent lighting as well we've got a trophy here and there's a, a brew uh, the vuka brawler is actually not far that direction so but we've got big kegs and barrels and boxes and rugs and you know tables that are, look like you know a feast is being had or a party is being thrown and that was again we wanted everything to feel cohesive and actively used and not just a a shell of a structure that once was we wanted this to feel like when you froze something in time took the people out and this is what you got so we'll go ahead and we'll move on from here and we'll zip over to our next house um, this one's a little bit different this one um, there's no bed so that's that's a slightly maybe this isn't someone's house maybe this is like a workshop of sorts but i like this little natural bench 
in this window that got made sort of on accident but it ended up working out really well but again we've got books we've got boxes we've got paintings we've got books we've got a fireplace we've got books we've got paintings we've got books you know what i'm saying they're smart people they like their reading moving on this one's a little bit small again depth windows being popped out or carved out or just trying to make things not so boxy and square was a really big challenge for me but it was something i really enjoyed the challenge of trying to figure out how to do because it's not something i'm usually super uh super good at so this is our this is an interesting building because you can see it goes up into the mountain it's sort of like a tower rather than being like a, a house like the rest of these structures so we'll go ahead and we'll pop in here and check this one out oh look more books uh, but immediately they're met with a ladder. So we'll go ahead and climb up here. Look, more books. It's crazy. It's almost as if books are very important to these people. And we come up here. I really like this. This is awesome. This feels like, I don't know. It feels luxurious to me. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because it's bigger than all of the other homes. But again, fireplace. We've got a bed, some books, some paintings, um, more reading areas. And this is a, this is the town's farm. It is sort of like an underground cave-like farm, but it's being irrigated by these waters of life. So everything, it just grows. It's so lush and beautiful and, and uh, brings health to its inhabitants. And we have a variety of things here. And obviously with the glow from the luminous block, it creates this really cool magical feeling while still having the lanterns lining the room. I re this is my favorite room in the entire building, entire build, I'm sorry. Um, but again, we've got things to make it feel natural. We've got the seedling bed, we've got a bucket, we've got boxes, I don't know, things just to add a little bit more character to what's going on here. Um, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, I did point it out, but wherever we have this magical water, basically, there's some growth for the most part. So anywhere that things could grow, there's some of that bright green grass. Now moving on to our last section here, we are going to go check out um, the actual last addition. Actually, there's one more thing I want to show you first. This is fun. We have uh, some swinging across the town here. I forgot about this. Around the back side of this house, there's one more hidden area. If we swing and jump and full commit to this grapple, we are in a little bit of a mine shaft sort of cave that's been dug out up here, uh, up in the mountain. If we continue through, we put some scaffolds here to kind of add like structural support to the caves, which personally I think is a, a really interesting thing I had just kind of come up with. I don't know if I've seen anyone else do that, uh, but I think it's really cool. Again, we've got more of the water of life, and this is sort of like a little alchemist's lab, working right here at another spring with more growth almost sort of like a his own personal little altar to the water of life uh, but again books he's doing some research he's trying some new experiments he's doing all these new things seeing what he can come up with in his secret little lab with a nice little vista and uh and a view of kind of what's going on over here it's been grown out pretty well but a nice nice little peek out of the cave here and we're gonna go ahead and just glide back to this main platform really quickly and now our last platform our last addition is our hot spring so this is sort of like a spa hot spring with the water of life this is where all the inhabitants of this village can come to rejuvenate themselves enjoy company and just relax and you know take in the blessing that is being able to live where they live so we have sort of a little bar situation here where you can come in and hang out or maybe stop here and relax before you leave Again, scaffolding for some structural support. We've got benches, we've got stools and boxes to hang your clothes on or maybe set your book down while you're taking a dip in the hot spring. Little communal sitting areas around a fire pit. It's very, very fun, very, very unique. Something we uh, kind of came up with late in the build. And then lastly, this is our shrine to the water of life. This droplet, this giant water droplet hovering in this cave the source of the water of life in this mountain. You can see this whole room is just overgrown and lush, even though it's in this cave, this is just exuding so much restorative power. But yeah, this was this was a really fun thing that we got to do. My buddy and I, I wouldn't say either of us are super, super talented builders. I think we're both creative people, but when it comes to like mega structures, that's not really our strength. I think we create stories and environments and experiences rather than 
the Sistine Chapel type of building. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for checking this out. I still can't believe that we got nominated. This was so fun. We spent maybe 10 to 15 hours building this uh, collectively. We Neither of us had a ton of time to work on it, but we wanted to participate. And we really just wanted to submit something. So we're over the moon to have even been nominated for a top 25. And coming up very shortly here, we're actually going to have the reveal of the top 13 placements, people who are actually going to be winning prize money for this competition. So, I mean, obviously we would be ecstatic to win, but I genuinely don't think we will. It'll. This was just a fun thing that we got to do. And and now we can say that we are um, among the best in terms of builders and enshrouded, at least for now. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please let me know what you think down in the comments. If there's things you think that could really put this build over the top, let me know. Obviously drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, please go look and check out all of the other builds that have been nominated. If anyone else is posting videos, the one I can think of right now is see-through. Go check his out. He built this incredible underground forge it's super super cool but absolutely keep playing in shrouded keep building keep being creative and have a great rest of your day and as always keep creating keep innovating and happy gaming